Hello everyone and welcome to probably one of the biggest recaps I have to do this entire year. And I don't say that lightly, mainly because there was just so much that happened and yet so little that happened. And that basically encompasses a JP Lime stream. Lime stream? I love a Lime stream actually. That would basically encompass a JP event to its core. So. Tonight was all about the third anniversary live stream on the JP side, and it both gave a lot of promise and actually some surprising updates that at the time of watching, I don't think I fully understand. And now that it's after and I've thought about it, I really don't understand. So let's just talk about it and get right into it. For one thing, this was one of Alum's most successful streams of the entire year. Taking a look at it, it started off on a very negative note with a lot of downvotes, but, um, well, if you just take a little bit of a scroll down, you'll see that the fact that we actually ended with over 2,000 upvotes compared to a measly under 700 downvotes. And if you don't know, on the JP side, that's pretty freaking rare to see that. Also, there's a little bit of black... Uh, text box showing through well we won't worry about it too much but basically it was kind of a surprise that uh, the information made such a big difference that you know people were okay people were happy with it and that's just kind of weird to say the least and it definitely won't be the only thing that'll be weird about in this talk so let's continue on and just go through some of the news that happened. So starting off the live stream, the live stream ended up basically being a bit of a letdown, especially for about an hour and a half, which was very uninteresting for viewers. But the first thing we found out is that we will be getting 10 free daily polls every 10 days for the rest of October. So that's a total of 100 free polls for everyone on the JP side. Hey, who knows? Maybe you'll even get lucky enough to get a rainbow. I mean, last time I only got one out of a hundred. Not exactly playing the odds, but hey, maybe this is finally my time. And other than that, we found out about the remaining rewards for the rest of the month. We're looking at about, you know, to capital off a 1600 Lapis a four star guaranteed ticket, as well as a guaranteed five star EX ticket. And that five star EX ticket arrives tomorrow. So there you go, you can have a basically a rainbow to start off the rest of the month and that is not all because moving on we talked a little bit more about the well we went over basically the third anniversary tickets basically you know whatever your rank is times that by five you'll get that many anniversary tickets it's going to be a lot of pulling for a lot of people who are super high rank obviously if you're ranked 250 you'll get 1250 tickets congratulations to anyone who plays that much of the game but continuing on, we are also on the JP side going to be having a 24 hour raid. Now this 24 hour raid for anyone who is playing the JP side, this is your responsibility. Get out there and do this raid as much as you can, mainly because, well, yeah, it only lasts for 24 hours and there are both personal as well as group rewards too. So, you know, it's not just what you do, it's what other people do matters as well. If we get a certain boss level, we will get certain rewards in the game. For instance, you know, some anniversary tickets, uh, some regular tickets too. I believe that the first reward Oh no, sorry. The first reward is 10 energy pots. I totally did not read that closely enough. Rank 34 gives us 10 anniversary tickets. 35 gives us an extra 20. Then we get some 4 star tickets, a 5 star ticket, and at rank 40 we get an extra 20 third anniversary tickets. And for every level we go up after that, beyond level 41, we get 10 tickets per rank and the max level raid is 60. So that could be, you know, just a whole bunch more anniversary tickets. Since those tickets can give both UOCs as well as just other things, I think it is a good idea to do this raid a whole bunch. If you're gonna spend some lapis refreshing a raid, do this one. Let's work together as a team, basically. Anyway, moving on. 
Go next up, we should talk about the actual event for the rest of this month. It is not a Brave Exvius event. It is, well, it is basically a Final Fantasy Brave Exvius event, and we are going to be seeing the Golden or Golem Bomb. I thought it was the Golden Bomb, but apparently it's the Golem Bomb. Really, probably should be Mom Bomb, but I guess there's already a Mom Bomb in the trial. <sighs> Forget it. All right, just moving on. It it will be lasting for the basically from the 23rd to the rest of the month. And the equipment that we get off it doesn't actually suck. We're looking at a, you know, a piece of clothing with some MP, some spirit and defense, an accessory that's basically attack, and an accessory with HP and spirit. Not bad. I mean, it's not great either, but it's not bad compared to some of the other stuff we've gotten. I feel like it's a little bit better. And for characters, you might be wondering, who the fuck is that? Well, good news and bad news. For good news for all you Ayaka fans, bad news for all your Ayaka haters, Ayaka is back. And she is back in a big way. Say hello to Yukata, or as I want to call her, Moon Festival Viewing Ayaka. Now, this girl is anything but what you expect, so let's talk about her. TMR, scroll down. Also, you can see we're getting a repeat of a couple units, mainly because they are good for the new units. Ayaka's TMR, new TM... Yukata Ayaka's TMR is a rogue, 22 defense, 68 spirit, 30% light resistance, 10% esper stats. Pretty damn nice, gotta say, overall. And her... Hat, or her super TMR is a hat, 38 defense, 94 spirit, 20% limit, 20% MP and limit burst per turn. But now this is where the surprise comes because Ayaka is now a damage dealer. Her limit burst is an AOE damage um, with spirit, or sorry, with spirit up. And then I can't remember if it powers up her other abilities, but either way, it's damage dealing. And as for her skill set, it is basically single target spirit scaling nuke, AoE spirit scaling nuke with a stop chance. Damn, she's mean. Spirit, uh, single target spirit scaling nuke defense and spirit break increase damage of certain abilities and allows use of another ability for five turns. The, that ability that she used is a single target spirit scaling nuke increased damage of certain abilities and allows use of another ability for four turns. Or is it the same ability? No, it's another ability. And that one is single target spirit scaling damages. And she has W ability because of course she fucking does. And her seven star will give her refresh, regen buff, light resistance, damage up for certain abilities and unlocks another ability. So not only that, but I do remember hearing something about it potentially chaining. So for those of you who are fans of Lila or Lyra as we call her on the JP side, um, this might be the second coming of Lyra. <laughs> Uh, she's she, she's single target or she is spirit damaging and that makes her incredibly interesting and if she does have AD chaining in a powerful enough kit good god you all but that's not the only unit because we also have sexy dress I mean dress up Eileen who basically is returning to us looking like a bond girl and let's see if I can't just find in the actual code back a bit all right well while that is playing i'll just talk a little bit more about this and it should still be yes okay uh materia is uh, for eileen will be a 60 attack with gun blind sleep and paralysis resistance so for attack you or for gun users this is just the best this news ever super tmr is a true dual hand gun 180 attack very curious what the variation is on that but still pretty interesting limit burst to single target damage defense ignoring self attack buff machine er, and stone killer buff and some kind of x ability damage up oh god uh, single target in her kit, she has single target defense ignoring nukes with earth imperils and self earth imperil. Okay, both of these are saying that they hit two times, so that's kind of interesting. We'll be needing to see what that is. AoE light and earth resistance up, single target ally limit burst gauge up at the cost of her own limit burst. AoE refresh buff 
W ability, because of fucking course they do, every unit has that nowadays. Seven star attack and certain abilities damage up increase. Triple ability unlock for the first four turns. AOE limit burst gauge up and limit burst gauge up on next turn. Sure, whatever. I mean, that's just a ton of stuff to talk about, really. Like, just, it's it's a lot to talk about. But obviously, both Eileen and Ayaka are pretty cool-looking units from what I have seen so far. So, uh, this, the spirit scaling as well as the, you know, defense ignoring could make both of these units very, very powerful. How powerful? Well, we gotta wait for their kits, but... For Eileen and Ayaka fans, good news for you, both of them will live on in a brand new, sexy and cool form. And yes, I do realize that I'll be talking about something later and talking about... Eh, eh, just Anyway, moving on. The other thing to note is that there is a guarantee for these. There is no step-up banner that looks like other than the fact that for one... Basically, 5k Lapis, you do a free or do a 11 pull where one of them is guaranteed one or the other of these units. Other than that, you'll probably have to UOC or use regular tickets or Lapis to get try and get the rest of them. But there's also some good news on that too. Because for every 5k pull that you do do, every regular 5k pull that you do do, for five of them, you are guaranteed to exchange for either a Ayaka or an Eileen. So if you get one off the guaranteed 5k and there are two tickets in the regular raid, you only have to do another 15k Lapis and you're guaranteed a seven star of one of these two girls. So it's not exactly the worstest news Everest. Although that being said, it's also not the greatest either. Continuing on the can I pick the one next? Thank you. There was also a popularity rating. The most popular FFBE characters, no surprisingly, Axstar with a couple of units following behind and continuing into the FF series. Kind of surprisingly, Orin was number one. I didn't think Orin was that popular, but there you go. There it is, as Jeff Goldblum says. And so there will be 5% banners on all of these, and it looks like there is also a ticket that comes with it. Now, whether these tickets are... Let me just see. One per player for the Eileen. The 3% Annie popular banners. 5% rainbow rates, so good news. Uh, gives you one HD limited ticket for every 10 plus one pull. Use five of these to either get Yukata Ayaka or Dress Up Eileen. Oh. Okay, so I guess you don't get... Yeah, maybe the maybe I got it... S put a pin in this one, you guys, until I find out later, because the way it reads is that um, the HD banner or the HD tickets do do come on the regular one, but that may not be the case as it turns out. No, yeah, it is. Sorry, sorry. Getting confused because I was not aware that the, um, that is like that. Anyway, so whether you do the third anniversary popular banners or the Ayaka and Eileen banner, you are guaranteed to get a one of these tickets from spending 5k lapis on a regular 11 pole getting five of them will make you a, you know, will be exchangeable for a unit of your choice. So there you go. Uh, just hope that the guaranteed 5k one gives you something that you actually want. Next up is a bit of an announcement about, well, basically premium boxes, cost of a thousand lapis, max of three, uh, two summon tickets and one set of pots. Nope. No, fucking don't do it. Don't fucking do it. I don't even need to talk, really talk about this too much. Just don't fucking do it. Okay? Can't believe that I even need to remotely talk about this. And interestingly enough, uh, what was announced but will not be apparently... or Well, it starts on the 23rd, but the in-game data hasn't shown up yet. Imperial Saga will be coming back as a collaboration again. Um, for those of you on Global, these are the units, basically, that came to, you know the Japanese side. They weren't that special back then. They, The five star bases will be getting seven stars. It should be noted that the 
Um, one of the units will have a 60% true dual wield super TMR with 60% attack to sword as well, but I don't think it's worth it. I don't think it's good. I have no information of whether there'll be any step up banners whatsoever for this. So as far as I'm concerned, stay away, stay far away, stay far, far, far away, unless you're a whale. But that was not all because one of the units from this banner that global people will not be super familiar with is actually coming back and he is getting a five star form. It would be nice if the video switched over. There it is. Abel will be getting, who was basically a free unit from the raid, will be coming back and getting a five star version that goes up to seven star. Super Trust Mastery, I believe, is a great sword and he basically has a great sword Trust Mastery with auto refresh. Seems okay. Doesn't seem like it's like, oh my god, wow. But his sprite also has a lion on it. That actually looks really fucking cool. It's almost the, it's only the third coolest uh, sprite that we are going to talk about tonight. But yes, there you go. And something else to note, not that, that's just the 10 free pulls a day. There is something else to talk about somewhere in here. Is it this one? Nope. Tired and it was a long stream. It was a really long stream. Watch me fail. The other thing to note is that uh, there was an announcement that I can't seem to find anymore. God, I miss the days when it was easier to scroll through this. Ah, here it is. The EX point system in Japan is actually getting a bit of a upgrade. Looks like uh, some of the old rewards that were just, you know, uh, basically okay are now going to get a little bit better, like cactars as well as, you know, just some of the stuff that was really starting to feel dated. Yeah, basically for spending money on the way up, you'll get some level max stuff and some, it looks like trust moogles as well. So in general, the EX point system finally gets a bit better. Uh, probably should still get rid of those regular EX tickets for, you know, higher quality ones, but you spend money on the game. That's what happens. That's what you get. So yes, in talking about that, there was also some other minor news to talk about. First of all, side stories will be coming to the game on the 23rd third for a couple of characters, Eileen, Roy, as well as Sylvia. Now, in the live stream, they actually showed off a little bit of what these are look like. These are basically found on the world map, and these are... Well, they give extra abilities to the characters. How good these abilities will really be in making these characters much better, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, if you take a look at Eileen, new version of Eileen is right around the corner, so not really sure if this will be enough for her. In terms of, whoops, Roy. Roy will be getting a big cooldown ability, which is a really cool sounding song, and that's just some absolutely awesome uh, artwork there. Kudos to whoever did that. Um, but yeah, in general, it doesn't seem like it'll be enough. And the last character to get one of these is Sylvia, which is cool because Sylvia is cool. And it's pretty cool that she coolly gets a cool little side story. Although it probably won't be that big enough of a deal. Also announced, we will all be getting expansions to our items, uh, materials, materia, and equipment. A total of 300 to each. So... You never have to buy expansions, basically, for a long time. So this is just great news for everybody out there. Nothing really much else to say. Just enjoy it. The story update will be coming on October 30th. It will be near the end of Season 2. Doesn't look like yet we're hitting the end of Season 2. Maybe Fan Festa will be when Season 3 starts. I really don't know. But we'll see what happens with the story. And next up, Blood Moon is making a return. Yeah, CCR was right. I see a bad moon arising. This is the Kai version, basically meaning that this is going to be an extremely difficult version of Blood Moon. And considering how powerful Blood Moon was compared to the other trials that we've gotten Kai versions of, this should be pretty much impossible. In it, you do get a super TMR quality weapon, 140 attack. Was it 140 attack?
140 attack, 170 magic, 75%, some kind of killers. Guess we'll basically find out. Now, after this, there was basically just a really long time of some things that just didn't really matter. And then we finally got back to the actual news. Starting with a new type of event. This new type of event will have you setting three different parties. Each party will fight its own wave of enemies. The rewards of this are mainly burst pots. So I would not expect this to be incredibly difficult. Um, I don't know exactly how difficult it'll be, but needless to say, I'm not expecting it to be in possible. As a matter of fact, I'm expecting the difficulty to be relatively pretty easy for now, but maybe in the future we will see a little bit more difficult stuff. Now, continuing on, a big announcement was the fact that all, um, well, as we all know, all characters uh, from Final Fantasy are in the game in some aspect from each Final Fantasy, and because of that, we will be fighting Final Fantasy bosses from past FF games. Again, it would be really nice if I could just get... There we go, let's freeze it right there. So, basically every series of Final Fantasy will be represented in this. We will be fighting each of these Final Fantasies, final bosses. Uh, so, the first one to be announced was Neo X Death. Uses the game's OST should be announced or uh, mentioned as well. And this is just really, really cool. It's about time this happened. I, I can't believe this has taken this long for this to happen. This sh should have happened sooner. Happened. <laughs> yes, my throat is going to die from all the talking I am doing tonight. And next up, probably one of the biggest things that everybody will be absolutely super happy about is the announcement that you will soon, soon, be able to set your friend unit, and not just a friend unit, multiple friend units. That's right, you will be able to set multiple units and share with your friends, each having their own item set. So, the friend list finally gets fucking improved. Finally. It only took them how long for this to happen. But yes, this should make the friend unit system much better than it has been and stop that problem of just being your friend list all being one unit, actually giving you multiple different types of units to get. And next up, continuing on, was a bit of a surprise announcement, which was that Super TMRs will now trigger trust abilities. Now, of course, for free to players, this doesn't free to players this won't sound super amazing because, let's face it, um, <coughs> take a break. Mmm, that's good ginger ale. And we're good to go. Basically, what this means is that if a unit has a shitty TMR, well, good news. That unit is going to get potentially some life thrown into them. And not only them, but them but um, potentially just everyone. Take Leneth. Leneth has always had a pretty mediocre TMR, a Dark Sword with 135 attack that has limited her, but her Super TMR is much stronger. Well, guess what? Now equipping her Super TMR will still give her Trust Mastery ability, which is pretty nice since her Trust Mastery ability does make Leneth, you know, you know, more powerful. This is really good news for units like Lenneth. It's also good for powerful units that are already incredibly powerful, like Ellie. Not having her own TMR, which is 120 magic rod with 20%, you can put much better things on Ellie with her own super TMR, which, her, again, her own super TMR, elemental resistance and 60% magic, fucking amazing. Yeah, so basically this will be potentially benefit a ton of units in the game. Take Orlando, not having his bad accessory and instead just putting on his super high attack. Great sword means that you can potentially have him that will be much more powerful. Where did that draft come from? Lots of distractions tonight. But the other unit that was kind of thrown around is Sephiroth. Sephiroth not having to use his Muramasa and instead being able to use Axtar's Super TMR with his 80% attack. Super TMR 
<laughs> Ian, it's it's just gonna be nuts. It's, I wouldn't be surprised if Sephiroth actually gives Axtar a run for his money with damage dealers. Of course, maybe Ayaka could too. But this is probably one of the biggest things that was uh, announced tonight was this uh, basically Super TMRs triggering TMR abilities. This changes the way to think about a lot of different units. Take Lyra, not having to use her own TMR to being locked to the dark element with a shitty spirit stat means that she could potentially be, you know, considerably more powerful. This could be a big improvement for a lot of different units in the game. So needless to say, it is exciting to say the least, if not for the possibilities of what could happen. And also was announced is Grand Missions. Now, Grand Missions are basically built as my, as the way it was said, they are aimed towards newer players with a bunch of rewards, although older players should be able to clear it too. I don't know if the rewards will really be that good, but I guess it's something to encourage new players, and that is something that FFB desperately needs, is more new players. But with all of that being said, there was a, after that, there was, you know, a lot of chat, but then we got kind of a inter, or a, basically an, a new advertising video for FFB JP to tease our next Mog King. So let's run it right now. Now, as you can see, nothing really that special. Oh, third anniversary, 10 free pulls per day. Okay, that's 100 free pulls. Third anniversary tickets. Oh, look at all that shit. CGs, CGs, CGs. Wait, what? What? Who the fuck? Is what? That is correct, everyone. You did not see that wrong. We are getting CG Lightning. As a matter of fact, this was is just the tip. Just the tip. Just the tip. For any of my Archer fans out there, let me tell you something right now. This is the start of a brand new campaign for Brave Exvius and a reimagining of a ton of characters. Yes, we are getting CG Lightning to start and every protagonist from a Final Fantasy will become a CG. Well, every numbered one, at least for now. I don't know if Crystal Chronicles will be getting a CG character. That would be cool though. But yes, that means Firion, Zidane, Squall, Cloud, Noctis, you name it, Shantoto, they will all be getting CG versions and Lightning will be the first. Now, Lightning is her Geshalt version with Odin, but that was not it. We also saw Hope. That's right. All of you people who have been badmouthing Hope, Hope is back with Alexander to kick your ass. And let me tell you something, Future Hope is just, looks really, really cool. Uh, no idea necessarily what he will be quite yet. We'll wait for the in-game da data to see what his kid is like, but needless to say, give me all of these Final Fantasy 13 characters with their summon, please. Fang with Bahamut is just going to be, oh my god. So needless to say, I'm pretty hy hyped about this. This looks really, really cool. But we're also going to be getting Geshalt Lightning, which, or I don't know, Rider Lightning. I'm sure there's probably something. Let's just call her CG Lightning for the meantime. CG Lightning is kind of interesting. She is a true dual wield unit, the one that they were talking about with the changes, which means that she could be potentially the new top damage dealer on the JP side. I'm not even joking about that. It's been a little while since Axstar has come to the game and Satan, so, and Alum has been talking about making true dual wield absolutely 100% competitive. If you consider how popular Lightning is on the JP side, yeah, yeah, this this could be it. This could be the switch over. This could be the unit that finally takes dual wield back into a competitive seat, to say the least. It also should be noted that her limit burst will be the first limit burst that can go up to level 40. Every character in the game has a limit burst that can be leveled up to only 30. So she is the first character that can get it up to 40 and it will probably be a continuation for all the CG characters from now on. 
She also starts the fight with a max limit burst gauge too, meaning that you can use her limit burst right from the get-go. If her limit burst is incredibly powerful, yes, she could be just an absolutely incredible unit. I would expect her to be a powerful true dual wield unit. And so that is basically everything that I have heard from this live stream. Uh, there was some recap of the third anniversary too. And yes, uh, the music cut out actually at a pretty good time. So the Mog King event, that'll be Final Fantasy 13. It'll be starting on November 1st and I will be doing some polls, but I want to talk a little bit about something that happened in the live stream that I was not super crazy about. And I'll try and wrap this up quickly. Uh, there, Alum has been basically talking a lot about recently um, the Fan Festa, and tonight was no exception. They ended up talking about the Fan Festa. That's fine. It's their event. They're allowed to talk about it. They're spending probably a ton of money to make this Fan Festa event happen. And to be fair, I'm going to the Fan Festa event. I am absolutely, totally on board for it. I will be going out to Tokyo for it. If you guys are there, stop by, say hi. Shouldn't be hard to see me in a crowd of Japanese people, you know, because I'm not Japanese, so I stand out. But other than that, there was a little bit of show off of the merchandise. Again, I don't really dislike that. There is showing off of hoodies and t-shirts and clear files and art prints and everything like that. And that is totally fine. I am okay with that. If you take a look at the, I mean, the costs are kind of expensive. Eight, eight, over 8,000 yen for a hoodie? Are you fucking kidding me? But yeah, maybe that's just what I need as a streamer to be taken seriously. What I was not okay with was this, which is basically a fan service uh, magazine or pictures or whatever, which is basically kind of using one of the girls who are the main two girls for FFB on the JP side. Now, both of these girls cosplay for this all the time, and one of them is doing the Citra cosplay that you see here, and she will be in a bunch of basically, you know, cosplay photos. And why am I talking about this? Alum recently has been kind of doing this a lot, of uh, basically making uh, units that, uh, well, some CG animations that have been, that could be lightly described as overly sexual, and... With Brave Exvius's failing numbers, or lowering numbers recently, and a lot of players being angry, this really feels kind of filthy. Absolutely filthy, to say the least. And I wanted to highlight this because this is something that's been going on a little bit for Brave Exvius, and it seems to be kind of a joke, and I'm sure that the photos were, you know, probably taken respect... <laughs> for surely probably taken respectfully, but... She even has looked a little bit uncomfortable recently, and I'm not entirely sure she hasn't just been getting, you know, crap or whatever, but I, I want to highlight just some of the cool stuff. Super TMR changes, um, uh, CG protagonists, you know, friend unit changes, um, even the 24-hour raid, all of this stuff is really positive, and I think went a long way to improving people's, you know, feelings on the game right now, which has felt a little stagnant and stale. This felt really out of fucking place. This has no purpose here. If she's okay with it, if it's totally on the level, fine, whatever. But I don't think that this should be in Brave Exvius at all. Not fan service of a real cosplayer out there like this. I might be making too much of a big deal. I'm definitely tired after five hours of streaming. But after what was essentially an hour of really slow, no information, and the fact that there was stuff missing from this too. There was nothing about four stars getting seven stars. That appears to not be happening. Uh, there was nothing about super trust moogles. I find this very, very off-putting, to say the least, of uh, potentially exploiting an employee. And again, with no proof, I definitely can't say anything, but it's something that I would rather not see. I'd rather just focus on all the cool stuff. But Alum, I'm going to just say, I really don't think that this is the way you should be doing things. 
Anyway, you guys, I hope that you all are doing well. I hope you found some cool news, and I would like to do another video talking about the Super TMR change, but um, I, I'm kind of just dying, and I need to take a bit of a rest. So uh, all of you guys, uh, take care. I'll see you in the next video, and yeah, see you then. Oh, probably shouldn't have closed that that early. Eh, see you next time.